Alright, what is going on you guys? It is your boy White Album here and I am now happy and proud to present to you guys Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass. Man, I finally got my copy in today. You know, I, I saw on like Reddit and uh, mainly Reddit, a lot of people getting their copies a little, I don't say a little bit early, but you know, I had, I definitely had, uh, you know, ordered mine on through Amazon. You know how Amazon is at the, you know, when it comes to stuff like this. So I, I had to wait a bit and I did my best to not you obviously did not spoil anything for myself even though i did if you guys remember i did play a bit of this game uh you know just to recall that yes i did play a bit of Tsukihime, uh the remake on uh ryu jinx the uh, uh what is it the nintendo switch simulator and um only i only got to the part where uh shiki did me arcoid uh and that's where i pretty much where i stopped because the sound quality was not great but here we go man it's been a long time coming and i've waited for a very long time now i'm happy that it's finally here in my hands so let's get into let's get into it man enough enough blabbering enough blabbering so before i get started man like comment and subscribe for the moon princess and i did start it because i know uh white and no, i almost said white i almost said my own name because i know witch on the holy night kind of did like this little intro thing so i did start it just to make sure it didn't have that it did so i did um it did have that so i just cut you know i just got out of everything then i had like set up a few things on obs because uh my camera wasn't working but here we go man enough blabbering let's get into it man i'm so hyped oh yeah we got arcawain just silhouetting the moon all right here we go with me mm. and you know how it is man we have to have the water right next to us man oh i'm so happy this game's out man i'm so happy it's finally here it is finally here all right, here we go. I awake suddenly. A dark night, an empty house. I'm probably not, I'm not gonna bother reading this because it's like it's like auto it's like auto scrolling so so I'm assuming this is Arcoid speaking Ooh, who had fallen ill Hmm? Okay, they might be talking about Shiki with that third line there. Because he does have like a somewhat illness. Ah, type moon. Dude, I'm so hyped, man. I'm so happy it's here, dude. I'm so happy it's here. ほう。お白い気が白くなっていく。庭はとても指先が痛くなるぐらい寒かった。コール星深い闇冷め冷めと世界を照らす冷たい光。屋敷の庭はすごく広くて周りは深い闇に囲まれて森の木々は黒く黒く大きなカーテンのようだったまるでどこかの劇場みたいさあ小杖の中橋 Taku Takeuchi and then Kiyoma Hirokazu art director Oh, just a, I guess, somewhat of a warning? Uh, I'll do it after this. I kind of hate that they put that shit sideways. I can't read that shit. Ooh, that bit dark forest. It's pitch black. Okay, 
途中で誰かとすれ違ったかもよく記憶できないくらい自分の名前を呼ばれた気がしてもっと奥へと歩いていった木々のベールを抜けた後森の広場にはみんな揃って待っていた Oh no, I remember this. I think this is the night that、uh, Shiki's clan gets attacked. Right? Yeah, okay, never mind. I remember. This is, this is when.、Um, this, is, this is the night that Shiki's clan gets attacked. Yeah. Because I believe this is like, this is Shiki Dream, if I remember correctly. From what I played, I think, I, I, from what I played, I remember that. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember, I remember. I remember. Because if you don't know, Shiki is actually not a Tono, he's actually a、uh, Nanaya, or Nania, as you want to say. So, I believe this is Shiki recalling、uh, moments in the past. Because if I remember, he does wake up in a hospital. The moon. ぼんやりと。いつまでも青い影を見上げている。How strange. Alright, I believe he's waking up if I remember. Alright, I'm seven minutes in. Yeah, a child does get stabbed, so. <laughs> That's where I want to kind of give a little bit of a warning here. But I'm still waiting for this to,、uh, to finish up. I think it's finished. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I hope this does not get copyrighted, bro. If this music is copyrighted, fuck it. Fuck YouTube. I'm just gonna let it play out. I don't even make money off this, so it's fine. Didn't even notice. Just how beautiful the moon is tonight. Hey, there we go. Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon. There we go. Ooh, a nice little intro there, man. A pretty long one, too. But if I remember that correctly, that's、um, that's actually Shiki like, recalling the nights that his、uh, clan was killed. Because, again, if you don't know, he's not a Tono. He's a Nanai, I believe. And he was adopted into the Tono family. That's a whole story arc that we're going to get into when we play this. But,、uh, yo, I'm. Yes. Oh, I'm so hyped, baby. I'm so hyped, man. For one, I, again, I, I remember playing this on Ryu Jinx. And man, I, I, I'm kind of mad that I just couldn't be able to play more of it because the, the sound quality of the. of the、uh, Again, I was playing on my laptop, so it probably wasn't the greatest thing, anyways. But we have it here officially on PlayStation and Switch if you have it. But you know me, I'm a PlayStation boy, so I have to have it on, I have to have it on PlayStation. Uh, and I believe、uh, I did get the limited edition, which I didn't know when、uh, when I lost eight. I don't want to say lost, but when all of a sudden $80 was removed from my、uh, from my bank account, I was like, whoa, hold on. So I checked. It's like a limited edition. I do have the box and I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty sick. But oh, we're here, baby. We are finally here, man. After months of them revealing. The official translation, man. We are finally here. Oh, I'm so psyched. But I did say a warning.、Uh, this game 
has a lot of themes and um uh, what is it? themes and uh I don't know themes. I, I, a lot of more adult themes compared to uh, Witch on the Holy Night because this is a rated M game compared to Witch on the Holy Night is a rated T game. There's a lot of things in this game that uh, yeah. So I, again, it's a it's a lot of um, I guess suggestive and adult theme. Not like the way you think it is. It's just a lot of like if you know the scene that I'm talking about with Arco Wade and Shiki, we're gonna get into that one relatively soon. Uh, yeah, so th this is a fair warning. I don't know. I'll probably, I think in the next video, I'll put that, that I have like a warning clip that I have that I use, that I use for my corpse party playthrough. Don't worry. I did not forget about that. I, I mean, I kind of did, but just haven't had the time to play any corpse party, but I definitely want to get back into that. But I might, I might throw that, uh, that little, uh, attention warning in the beginning of the next video. But yeah, you can't, the, again, this game has a lot of heavy themes in it so just a fair warning to you guys but uh, no more no more random no more random we're already 11 minutes in let's get into it baby oh i'm so hyped 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 to tear man i'm so hyped to tear let's go let's go all right Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon all right let's let's sip the water real quick I, I, it's just crazy how it took them this long to release this game to uh to the rest of the world but here we go i gotta make sure that uh auto scroll is off and autoplay is off because it's gonna be me baby and again this one i know for a fact this playthrough is gonna be a long one compared to my holy night playthrough because unlike holy night this one actually has two routes you have arcoade and cl um okay make sure make sure we have uh, what was I saying? It has two ar uh, routes, Arcoid and CL, and both of those have many endings. You know, you got your good endings, you got your neutral endings, you got your bad endings, and you have your true endings. So there's a lot to this game that we're going to be getting into, ladies and gentlemen. So be per just sit down and relax for this journey that we're going to have with Tsukihime, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. So here we go. Let's get started. Let me put my headphone like that so I can hear myself talk a little bit better. Oh, dude, I, you guys can't, I, you probably could tell through the camera. I'm so giddy right now. I love it. Again, I've been waiting for this game for so long. So here we go. Here we go. I wake up to find myself in a hospital bed. There are curtains that gently sway. Uh, real quick, because again, I did play this. I know it's like a broken record. We, this is Shiki waking up in the hospital. And this is a very young Shiki too. He's still a kid. Uh, a chilly breeze enters through a window, open window. I instinctively squint at the harsh color of the room. Where am I? What day is it? What happened to me? I can't seem to think straight. I try to push myself up, but a sharp pain courses through my body. My breath catches in my throat, and I start gasping for air like a fish. Is this what they mean by seeing stars the moment i place my hand against the hard bed pain erupts from the inside out again Ugh. still lying down i take a deep breath and look over my body both my hands were covered in bandages my left leg's also set in a plaster cast i feel a tightness around my head so it must have been wrapped up too a large thick adhesive strip is stuck to my chest like it's hiding something bad Oh, trust me, it is bad. My left arm has a tube poked through it. Some part of me understands that this is an IV. I guess I must have seen all this while I was drifting in and out of sleep. Again, quick, what's it called? Because they, I mean, they do mention it, but um, I guess it's slight spoilers too, but uh, yes, Shiki was attacked that night. That's why we saw that whole intro. The other dimly, or the other room, dimly lit and reeking of medicine and chemicals. The array of tubes poking out from under the bandage on my chest. The scary man in the suit who came to see me. My little sister getting scolded by the man who came to visit. Akia. The doctor, as giddy as a child. 
I remember all of it like it was a dream. Wait, are you awake? I hear the voice of an unfamiliar woman. I don't have the strength to answer her. She then bursts out of the room, frantically calling for the doctor. Pitter patter, pitter patter. Go her steps. She really shouldn't be running in a hospital, even if it is to give me help. Unable to lift my body, I turn my head and look up at the window. I feel a sharp pain in each of my eyes, as if a jagged knife were poking and prodding around inside my brain. The sky outside is so blue, it looks unreal. I find myself or I find my eyes flinching not from the white, hot glare of the sun, but from the spotless stretch of blue. Days pass. Since waking up, I still haven't been able to move from my bed. My only view of the outside world is the same, far away sky as before. Gently, the curtains flap. A dry wind touches my cheek. Their stainless, the stainless swath of blue lies, uh, leaves my eyes feeling woozy. Where am I? What day is it? Why am I at a hospital? Gradually, the answers come to me. Except for one. I keep looking out the window. A thought just out of reach. Something important. A tearful promise. I can't remember. Ah, hello, Mr. Shikitona. You seem to be recovering quite well. Words from a man I've only just met. He offers me a handshake. With his gentle smile and soft-spoken voice, he seemed like a kind man. Though, I get the feeling he's someone who could wipe the smile off his face at the flip of a switch. The clean white coat he wears fits him perfectly. Mr. Tona, do you understand what I'm saying? No. What am I doing in a hospital? I suppose you wouldn't remember. You were hit by a car while crossing the street. A piece of glass was lodged into your chest. It was a miracle that you're even alive. The man, draped in white, smiles as he utters something a doctor probably shouldn't say. It's a miracle that you're alive. That queasy feeling I was holding back threatens to spill out after I hear those words. Uh oh. Some mysterious lines. I'm tired. Can I sleep some more? Ah, Ah, yes, of course. Get some rest, and try not to overexert yourself. The doctor continued smiling. Honestly, it makes me feel uneasy. Uh, hey doctor, can I ask something first? Of course, Mr. Tono. What is it? How come your body has all those scribbles? The room's full of cracks, too. It's like it could all fall apart any minute. For a brief second, the smile vanishes from the doctor's face. Then he rises out of his seat, smile reapplied. His shoes clacked against the floor as he disappeared behind the curtain. I suspected, there may be some issue with his cerebral faculties. Call Dr. Ashia and neurosurgery for a consult. Uh, oh, and the boy may have damaged his optical nerves. Schedule an eye exam for the afternoon. 
The doctor whispers to his nurse, his voice cold and harsh, starkly different from before. It's so weird. They all have scribbles on them, too. Their friends who lie and cling to every surface of the hospital. I don't know why, but I just... But just seeing them is enough to make me feel sick. I wonder what these are. They're even scribbles on my bed. I touch one of them with my finger. Swip. The finger slides in. If I had something thinner, I bet I could go even further. I grab a plastic knife off a nearby tray and trace one of the scribbles with it. With no effort at all, the knife sinks down into the handle. Enjoying myself, I glide the knife along the lines in the bed. With the heavy sound, the bed neatly falls into two pieces. <coughs> bitch, damn bitch, over dramatic bitch? Fuck. <laughs> I turn to the voice behind me. The shriek belongs to a nurse standing on the door, her face stiff with shock. I'll explain why you can see these lines in a second, if you don't know. Mr. Tono, you want to tell me how you broke the bed? I noticed the doctor hadn't asked me why I broke it, but how? I cut the bed by following the lines. How come the hospital's full of these cracks anyway? Mr. Tono, please. There are no lines. I promise we won't be mad. Now, can you tell us how you broke the bed? I told you already. I just followed the lines. Ah, I see. Well, we'll have to talk more about this tomorrow. The doctor let out a sigh. He stopped smiling as soon as I mentioned the scribbles. I guess his switch is broken. This hospital is full of broken things. In the end, no one believed me. No matter what it is, I can cut it cleanly by slicing the lines with a knife. I don't even need to put any muscle into it. It's easy, like cutting paper with a pair of scissors. The bed, the chair, the desk, the walls, and even the floor. None of them are any different. And I've never tried it, but I'm positive it would uh, it would be the same with people too. That's a bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> no one else can see the scribbles. Only I can. I think it's because everything has fallen apart, and these are the seams holding them together. Just like my chest, it still hasn't fully healed after the operation, so they switched me up, or they stitched me up where it could, would otherwise fall apart. It's gotta be it. I mean, how else could a kid like me cut a cut a hole in what? Cut what? I'm sorry, cut up a whole wall. The nurse screams again. Seeing the holes in the wall, she glares in my direction. Her shriek goes on and on. Luckily, something is up with something is up in, with my ears, so it doesn't sound all that loud to me. The drawn-out noise fills me with dread, like the sound of a burning uh, cicada. Everything is in tatters. The idea of opening my eyes, of all uh, of living at all, is enough to make me want to disappear. All this time, I never knew. This is a kid, by the way. This is what I'm talking about when I say this game is not afraid to go this direction. I mean, especially the original Tsukihime as well. I bought the stitches holding the world together. Now easily they can break. No one else sees them. That's where they can go on living just fine. They don't know about the cracks all around us. They don't know how damaged their lives are, but I see it all. It chills me to the bone, holding me in place. Since it happened, everything sounds muffled, like my ears have been stuffed. 
Only the gash in my chest screams like a siren. But what happened? And when? No matter how hard I try, I can't remember. And scratching my head over, my head over it doesn't help either. My brain must have gotten rid of that information to make space for something more important. But the question still leaks out like water from a tap. Oh. I think I get it. The pieces all fit. That's why there's no mirror in here. If there was, the very first thing I could do is... Something. It. I'd be laughing while I laid there shattered, which means they're not the ones in danger of breaking. It's me who's broken. Now it all makes sense. Again, this is a child. Why two weeks have passed and no one believes me? Why two weeks have passed and no one comes to see me? Why two weeks have passed and I'm the only one living in this stitched together world? I don't want to be in this hospital anymore. I don't want to be surrounded by these scribbles. I have to get somewhere far away, where there won't be any people around. I'm not the weird one. It's this place that's weird, is what I tell myself as I make a run for it. Fucking running, baby. But the wound in my chest stops me from getting too far. By the time I realize it, I've ended up in the field next to the hospital. I didn't get very far at all. <laughs> my chest is burning. I squat to the ground miserably, batting a bout of coughs. Or battling, I'm assuming. I can't stay here, but I can't go anywhere else either. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to go for someone who can see all the stitching. Another wave of coughs hit me. No one's around. A sea of grass at the end of the summer. It wouldn't be the worst place to disappear. The thought is suddenly interrupted. It's the girl. It's the girl. Hey, you'll get hurt if you stay there. The voice of a woman cuts to my ears, clear as crystal. Oh, look at baby Shiki. Huh? Oh, there she is! There's the girl! There's a girl! Alko, baby! That's the girl! That's the girl! Don't harm me! A squirrel like you shouldn't be curled up in the tall grass. You almost got punted across the field. Damn, okay. Ah, that faithful meeting. The woman scolds, uh, scolds away, her finger pointing at me grumpily. I feel anger creep up inside me. I'm not that small. I'm one of the fourth shortest in my class. Oh, you know who's going to kick me, huh? Hmm, isn't that obvious? You and I are the only ones here. Who else could it be but me? The woman sure looks proud of herself, crossing her arms like that. She's not really crossing it, she has a, what's going on in her hand. Well, maybe it's fate that we found each other here. The name's Aoko Aozaki. What's yours? She speaks casually, like one friend to another, and offers out her hand. Seeing no re uh, reason to refuse, I introduce myself as Shiki Tono and accept her offered hand like I'm being pulled in magne uh, magnetically. Talking to her is fun. She doesn't shoot down anything I say just because I'm a kid. And she treats me like a person, listening to my every word. I tell her about myself. I tell her about home, about my long family lineage. How my dad is tough on etiquette and stern all the time. How I have a little... Uh, how I... Uh, how I have a little sister, Akia, who's really quiet and follows me everywhere. How I always wanted... Uh, how I always play with Akia and our friends in the garden, which is big as a forest since we have a huge mansion. How the Anakin's our secret spot, 
how I'm bad, how I'm bad at word games. How everyone says I'm going to grow taller. How I'm used to... How, what? How I'm... Oh, what, fuck, sorry. Hold on. How I used to like the smell of hospitals, but now I don't. How I love the sky when it's clear and blue, but looking at it makes me want to cry. How I'm glad to be alive. How I don't even hate the doctor who pretended uh, with a pretend smile. I surprise myself. I keep yapping away feverishly. Oh, uh, look at the time. Sorry, Shiki. I have some stuff I need to take care of. Let's stop here. The woman starts to leave. The thought of being alone again fills me with sadness. See you tomorrow. I'll be waiting here for you. Now be a good boy and go back to the hospital and listen to what the doctor says, alright? Oh. She says it so naturally, as if the idea that we weren't going to meet again tomorrow hadn't even crossed her mind and leaves. Uh, see you tomorrow. We'll get to talk again tomorrow, just like we did today. I'm so happy. It's the first time I felt something so strongly since waking up from the accident. Going to the grassy field in the afternoon has become a regular thing. The lady would get angry whenever I called her Alko. She just seems to hate her own name. Unsure what to call her at first, I eventually settled on Master. Master always listens to, whenever, to whatever I have to say and solves each and every one of my problems. Since the accident, I ended talking to people, but thanks to her, I'm slowly becoming my old self again. Well, not your old, old self. Being here on the grassy field is the only, th the only time my worries slip away, and I feel like the old me. I don't know who she really is, but I get the sense she could actually be a real teacher at, a, at some school. Well, she was a class president. <laughs> not that it's any of my business. Being around her is fun. That's all that matters. Okay, be prepared for this part. Hey, Master, look what I can do. I want to surprise her. I pulled out a knife I took from the hospital, and I cut the tree standing in the, in the field, rooms of the forest. Tracing the lines, I slice from the center of the tree to the bark. Cool, don't you think? I can see these scribbles everywhere, and as long as I follow them, I could cut anything like butter. No one else can do this, right? Be speechless. I get into the groove and decided to sink my knife into a horizontal line across the base of the tree. There it is. She slapped the fuck out of him. She rushes towards me and I feel the palm of her hand slap my cheek. Master? You need to stop. What you just did was incredibly thoughtless. She stares at me seriously. It's an unforgiving look, the determined gaze of someone who's about to punish an evildoer. How could I be so stupid? I was having so much fun. I completely forgot. These scribbles shouldn't exist, which means someone like me, who can see them, shouldn't exist either. This is a kid. I'll keep saying that over and over. This is a child, dog. A feeling of regret seeps into my chest like blood. I wish I could crawl up in a ball and die. That tree was the last reminder that this field was once a forest. In desperate to show off, I wouldn't have destroyed it for no real reason at all. I'm sorry. I felt tears. I feel tears trickle down my face. I know boys shouldn't cry, but I can't help it. As she hugs him. Yep. 
I hear my name called softly. Suddenly, even with the knife still in my hand, she hugs me tight. You don't need to apologize. You did do something worth getting angry over, but it doesn't mean you're the only one who uh, to do something bad. It, it doesn't? No, but listen, Shiki. If someone doesn't set you straight now, it'll lead to mistakes that cannot be undone. So I have to give it to you straight, like you were just any other person. What you did was something I couldn't help but react to violently. If I had misjudged my strength, I could have killed you. Her words truly frightened me. If it, is, uh, it isn't that I'm afraid of her killing me, but that I pushed her into almost doing so. The thought of it makes my heart sink. So don't cry, Shiki. And don't worry about apologizing. I won't either. <laughs> Again, talk about a faithful meeting, right? The one person who can understand what he just did. Of course, it's, you know, the magician. <laughs> Instead, I want you to understand the severity of what you've done. Even if it means you hate me for it. I... I don't hate you. <laughs> really? That's a relief. It looks like it was fate that I met you here. And just like that, as if to melt away my feeling of regret, she quietly asked me about the scribbles I keep seeing. When I start telling her about the lines, I feel her hug me tighter. Shiki, what you're seeing is very real. Even if they weren't meant to be seen. Even if people refuse to believe they exist. The lines you're seeing aren't an illusion. They're a reality. They're a reality. That's all on your own. That's all your own. There you go. Or that one up. Fucked up the sentimental moment. <laughs> so, that's it. I really am weird. Yes, Shiki, you are. I won't deny that. I fight back the tears. What she said stings a thousand times more than when the doctor doubted me. But it's not like I didn't see this coming. From the very start, from the moment I woke up, I've known the truth. I shouldn't even be alive. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You have a strange condition, but it's not far from an unexplainable. People can face anything if they understand the reasons behind it. At least, I've come to believe so. Even if an absolute fool will find a way to triumph if they've got the courage and wisdom to back it up. That's what makes us human. My first lesson, she calls it, with a hit of embarrassment. 
having a strange condition isn't a problem in itself. The problem is how I choose to deal with it. Then, can you explain these scribbles? Sure. So, everything has parts that break more easily. The fact that we all break down someday makes us imperfect beings. Your eyes see where things come to an end. I guess you could say that you could see the future. I see... The future? That's right. For now, that's all you need to know. You learn more when the time comes. If you end up crossing that bridge, that is. Uh, I'm not sure I get what you're saying. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's probably better that way. There's only one thing you need to understand. You shouldn't try to cut those lines on a whim again. If you do, you'll lose sight of just how precious life is. Okay, I won't. My chest kind of hurts too. I'm sorry. I promise I won't ever do something like that again. Good. Be sure. To, be sure to remember. I'll go. Be sure to remember that feeling, Shiki. If you do, I know you'll be able to live a happy life. She uncoils her arms, freeing me from her embrace. The sensation, cold and yet warm, fades away. But seeing them puts me on edge. Things fall to pieces when I cut them, you know? It's like everything around me could come crashing down at any second. Hey, let me worry about that. After all, it seems to be what led me to you. She leaves a ha almost I fucked that one. She heaves a long sigh and then smiles at me. Shiki, I'll have a special present just for you tomorrow. I'm going to return you to your normal life. The next day. On the seventh day since I uh, first met Master, he comes to the field hauling a large trunk with one hand. Alright, put these on, and you won't have to worry about those weird lines anymore. She hands me an ordinary pair of glasses. But I can see perfectly fine. Just try them on. They're not prescription. As I do, I, I do as she says and put them on. And then the moment I do. Wow. These are amazing, Master. The scribbles are all gone. 
わざわざ姉貴のところのマガン殺しを奪ってまで作った青崎青子渾身の一品なんだから粗末に扱ったらただじゃおかないからね四季<笑> Damn right they are I gotta go swipe my sister's pair to make them But these mystic eye killers are bona fide, one of a kind Alko Aozaki creation. You better take good care of them, Shiki. I will, I promise. But wow, you really are awesome. You made all those horrible lines vanish like magic. Well, I should hope so. I am a magician. A smug grin stretches across her face as she drops the trunk to the ground. There's just one thing, Shiki. Those lines haven't vanished. They're only hidden. If you take those glasses off, you'll see them again. You mean... They're still there? Exactly. There's no way to fix your condition. The best you could do is to find a way to live with it. No way. I don't want these scary eyes. They're just gonna make me break my promise to you. I get that. I mean, never mind. I mean, I feel like if she would have, like, went, met him when he was a bit older, gave him contacts instead, I feel like he would have been just fine. <laughs> ah. The one about never cutting the lines again. Silly. You can break that promise whenever you feel like it. Really? But didn't you just say cutting the lines is bad? Because, like, trust me, kid, your life is about to get a lot more fucked up in a moment. <laughs> You're right. It is. But those eyes of yours carry a special power that belongs to you and no one else. It's up to you had to choose. Oh, it's, it's up to you how you choose to use them. No one can blame you for having that power. The only question is... Uh, is what you want to do with it, Shiki? What I... want to do? She stares into my eyes, as if trying to peer inside. That's how it is. Hmm. Yep. Just as I thought. You have a fine look in your eyes. To tell you the truth, when I first ran into you, I wonder what kind of mess I've gotten myself into. You look like you, you look like someone who just lost so much already. But I guess I had nothing to worry about. Those aren't the eyes of someone willing to take things lying down. So go, reclaim the life you lost. Even with a whole lifetime, I can never find the words to describe the light I felt in my chest or the rush of joy that came with it. You belong here. She reaffirmed my reason for being more forcefully or more what? For being what? For being more forcefully than anyone. Okay, sure. I <laughs> fucked that one up. Shiki. 
君は個人が保有する能力の中でもひどく得意な能力を持ってしまったけどそれが君にあるということは何かしらの意味があるということなのフィキ You have one of the most unique abilities, even among all the strange and wondrous things out there. But the fact that you haven't means that there must be a reason for it. My stand on the. Kami Sama was none no imi mo naku chikara o akenai. Kimi no mirai ni wa hitsio ni naru toki ga aru kara, so no chokshi no mega aru tomo i e. God doesn't. God doesn't grant the power to people. Or power to people for no reason. It might be that you have eyes of death perception because you'll need them someday. Though, that sure is a cruel fate. But that's why you mustn't forget who you are a boy with an honest heart. As long as that's true, your eyes will never. Lead you astray. Sejin in a re, Nante Kotoa Iwanai. Kimiwa Kimiga Tadashi to Mo Utona in a re by. I'm not asking you to be a saint. Just do what you think is right. Ikenai to you koto, Sunao ni Kotomerate. Gomen na sai to Yeru Kiminara. Junen go niwa kito. Staking out to Konoko in a terra. If you can learn from any mistakes you make, you'll grow into a fine man. Maybe ten years or so down the line. She stands and reaches out for the trunk. Ah, but if you put on a coat, you can't wear a mask. 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 Oh, and I will say, you shouldn't take those glasses off except in extraordinary circumstances. Special powers have a tendency to attract other special powers. Like how Stan users attract other Stan users. Come on, now Jojo taught us this. And here's one more piece of advice for me. If you're going to break the rules, then think long and hard about the best time to do it. どうしても自分の手には負えないと判断した時だけメガネを外してよく考えて力を行使なさい。I pray you never have to, but should you ever need to take off those glasses, think clearly before you use your power. その力自体は決して悪いものじゃない。The power you have isn't bad. 結果をいいものにするか悪いものにするかはあくまで君の判断次第なんだから。Whether you use it for good or for evil is your choice to make. She picks up the trunk, and without even without her even saying a word, I know. It's time for us to say our goodbyes. Muri da yo, sensei. Oku dake ja ii koto ni nante dekinai. That's impossible, master. I can't use this power for good. Honto, sensei ni aou made koa kute tamara na katta. I was so afraid of it until I met you, and if it weren't for you, I wouldn't even be myself anymore. I can't do it. Even with these glasses, there's no way, not without you around. Piki, you shouldn't say things you don't believe. A lie that you can't even fool yourself with will only end up upsetting the one who hears it. Master's displeasure is readily apparent in her expression. Then she flits my forehead. Then I'm flying through a fucking tree. You already know it, don't you? You'll be fine. Nara. そんなつまらないことを言って、せっかく掴んだ自分を捨ててはいけないわ。So don't just so don't say something stupid like that and throw away everything you've just reclaimed for yourself. それじゃあお別れね
Bye, Shiki. Well, I guess this is farewell then. Bye, Shiki. Don't a ningen that the Jin said then a Otosiana Darakanano. Everyone's got their own share of problems to overcome in life. Kimi was Oreo Nantoka de Kiru Chikaraga and Dakara. Motto Santo Shinasai. Well, you have the strength to do something about it, so pull yourself together. She's really leaving. I'm sad, but as her friend, I want to see her right off, or off right now. Sayonara, Sensei. Okay. Goodbye, Master. Yes. Jodeki, Jodeki. So no iki de itsma de mogenki de ne. Great. That's the spirit. Just keep up, uh, just keep that up, and you won't have a thing to worry about. Saigo no kyokun. Pinchi no toki wa mazu o chitsuite. その後によく考えること。Here's my last lesson for you. When you're backed into a corner, calm down and think carefully about what you should do next. 大丈夫。君なら一人でもちゃんとやっていけるから。You're going to be fine. I have faith you'll turn out all right, even without me. She smiles fondly. A gust of wind see,、uh, sweeps through. Sending a ripple across the sea of grass. She's gone. Bye bye, Sensei. As I say the words, the realization that, she'll, that I'll never see her again sinks in. Left with me are a treasure trove of advice and a strange pair of glasses. In just seven days, I feel like I have one of the most important things of all. As I, stand there, as I stand there aimlessly, tears start welling up. I'm such an idiot. All I said was goodbye. Not once did I say thank you. Discharged from the hospital soon after, I won't be going back to the Tono household. Instead, I'm taking. And by another family. My body's recovered, but there's still lasting symptoms. To the Tonos, this means I'm defective. I'm no longer needed. Well, that's gonna be a lie in a few years. But I don't care. Shiki Tono's gonna be fine on his own. A new life and a new family are waiting for me. I leave behind the hospital room where I spent my tenth summer. Their curtains by my window sway in the breeze, just like always. I take in one last glimpse of the blue sky. As I do, a dry breeze washes over me, spelling the end of summer. Hmm, I wonder who's gonna go live with now. I already know because of,、uh, <laughs> because of Melty Blood, so. And because I played a bit of this game, again. Part one, homecoming, number one, or day one, I should say. Damn, we got days like in Persona? Shit, forgot about that. But there we go, man. I think that's how we're gonna end it, man. Ooh, wee! That's how we're gonna end it, baby. All right, a quick save. Actually, square. Okay, last time I pressed square, that did that. Okay. Save. We got homecoming, number one. And because, again, I've already played this, I already know that he's basically slight, slight spoilers. I mean, if you already played this, you kind of already know. But if you don't, a little bit of spoilers.、Uh, basically, he goes back to the Tonos、um, and he starts going back to, or he, he takes his train to go to school, but he's also going to go back to living with the Tono family. So, but we will see all that in the next episode of Tsuki Hime. Again, I am. So hyped at the current moment for this, dude. I'm, I'm so happy that it's here, dude. I'm so happy that it's here, man. I'm so happy that it's here. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. I, I there's nothing left to say, man. I'm just happy that this game's finally here, man. You know, it's like it's kind of weird how this game took forever to come out in English, but Witch on the Holy Night came out in English like relatively crazy. But yeah, I mean, we saw, we saw, we saw the homegirl Alco, we saw her again, we saw her again. And this time she's rocking her long, beautiful red hair, which, you know, I love. That's my favorite thing about her. Is that red,、oh、shit, is that red hair?、Uh, of course, we saw, we, saw, we saw a little baby Shiki, bro. You know? 
So yeah, he does have the mystic eyes of death perception, which basically means he sees all these lines, he cuts it, dead. Or anything that happens, splits, dies. So we'll be seeing that a lot more throughout the story. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And just stay tuned for some more Shiki, uh, almost said Shiki Hime, what the fuck? <laughs> for some more Suki Hime is what I should say, man. But as always, take care.